So today I want to tell you a story. A story that leads up to this moment right here. <laughs> Ryan, will you marry me? <laughs> but before we get to see what she says, let's rewind it back to the beginning, which actually wasn't that long ago. So the day was October 31st. Yep, Halloween, the day where I met my future wife. But she actually wasn't my wife when I showed up. She was a hot dog. Yeah, that's her over there in the hot dog suit. What hot dog doesn't have ketchup on it? <laughs> anyway, she walked in a little late with her friend and introduced herself to me. Hey guys! How's it going? She was telling me how she actually has been attending the church I've been going to and... Hey! I think your cousin Tania is in my fifth grade class. Wow, so many connections already. I can't believe we've just met. So the night went on and we were playing some board games and we ended up on the same team. And then we lost, and then we stopped caring about playing because we had lost ourselves in conversation. The more we talked, the more I heard how much we had in common, and the more I realized that this girl was meeting all the qualifications that I was looking for in a future wife. So I said, hey, maybe we should hang out tomorrow. Wait. Okay. Fast forward 18 hours. We were walking on the Kenai River Beach. We actually walked four miles. You know how sometimes the awkward conversation because you don't know what to talk about with someone that you're just meeting? Well, there was none of that. And we were just talking about everything under the sun, and I was realizing that this girl might just be the one. The next seven days after that walk, we hung out every single day, and we dove into some deep topics and some tough conversations that you would want to have with someone that you were considering living the rest of your life with. Everything was a green light. It was weird. She loved the outdoors. She valued family. She was a hard worker, a forward thinker, and she was smart like really smart. But most importantly, she loves God and wants to put Him first and foremost in her life. Which, first and foremost, is my number one requirement for a potential wife. So anyway, it's November 7th, just one week after Halloween, and I had learned enough about her that I thought it was time to move into the dating stage. All right, so I'm getting this little place set up to uh, bring Ryan down later today and ask her to be my girlfriend. The very first time we hung out, we were walking down the Kenai River Beach and we walked all the way here and we saw these old lawn chairs just sitting here and we decided we'd sit down and fly my drone. So that was the first thing that we did kind of together out here walking on the beach. So I thought it'd be awesome to bring it down, uh, set up some mimosas. We've got some special ordered fancy champagne. We've got some orange juice. And then my brother-in-law actually cut two wine bottles in half and uh, filed it down so the glass wasn't sharp and that's how we have these two custom made and engraved cups. And then I've got this small little note asking Ryan out, so we'll see how long it takes her to find it behind this chair right here. All right, well, everything's looking uh, all set up, so I'm gonna go pick up Ryan. She's just finishing up teaching school here pretty soon. So I'm gonna pick her up and uh, gonna go on a walk down the beach. And it didn't blow away. The... Thank you. <laughs> hey, Ryan. So, what did you say to the note? Oh, I had to say yes. She was so darn cute. I had to. Ever since I asked her out, we've been discussing marriage and our future life goals, what we wanted out of life, what our dreams were, and everything just seemed to line up. Kind of crazy how God works like that. So I met her mom at Thanksgiving and talked to her and was trying to weigh out the decision before me because, I mean, this is one of the most important decisions I'll ever make in my life. But after chatting with her mom and spending the last month with Ryan, I knew that we would be great together as a married couple. 
and Ryan didn't need any convincing. I think she might have came to that conclusion even before I did. One month? It's crazy, I know, but God's in control, so I try not to worry too much. So after I had met her mom and decided that this was the girl I wanted to marry, there was really only one thing left to do before popping the question. It was meeting her dad and making sure that the father gave me permission before we could proceed. So in the end of November, we booked tickets for mid-January for a trip to Colorado. Meeting her dad could not come soon enough. I spent two weeks down traveling in Costa Rica, filming and hanging out with my cousins, and then Ryan left down to Colorado for a Christmas time to spend Christmas with her family. And so the weeks were just dragging on and I could not wait to get down to Colorado because I was past ready to ask this question. But the day finally arrived for us to take off. Babe, where are we going? We all play a We're going to Colorado. Our surroundings safe. Traveling the south Tennessee. for eight hours on a plane, I was hoping that we'd be reaching warmer weather. But really, Colorado was snowy and cold just like Alaska. All right, so we just stepped off the plane in Colorado. I'm about to go meet her dad for the very first time. I'm a little nervous. Are you nervous for me to meet your dad? No, you're going to do great. He's going to love you. We grabbed our bags and I met Mr. Lundstrom. It really wasn't as bad as I was expecting. We were exhausted and it was really late, so we drove straight home, crashed for the night, getting ready for the big plans ahead. So we are going tubing and we are going to then go to the ice castles and eat a steak dinner. It'll be fun. So our first full day in Colorado was a blast. Things were going well. The next day we went to church and then we went to meet the grandparents. And then the next day we walked around downtown together. And we visited the shop where she had bought her wedding dress. Next, we went out to a restaurant to visit aunts and friends. But it came down to the time where I had to sit down with the old man and have a real heart to heart. But before I could, we were going to the range. Now, I grew up as an Alaskan boy, so I know how to shoot a gun, but it was never something I necessarily enjoyed for sports, so I was a little nervous. All right, well, I'm with Chuck. We're about to head into the firing range and pop off some rounds. We shot some uh, squirrels in there on the target and uh, we both came out alive. The time at the range actually was fun and then we drove home so we could have the talk. Well, Chuck, you know, I really love your daughter and I was wondering if I had your blessing to ask her to marry me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You make her very happy and that's very important to me. 
Welcome to the family. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> so he said <laughs> yes. I was so pumped, and I could not wait to get back to Alaska so I could pop the question. Now, before I left to Colorado, I had been hard at work preparing some things for this big day ahead. I wanted to have a little arbor built, so I went into my backyard and clipped down some birch trees. I was walking back with a handful of trees, and I was so excited I started skipping down the road. <clears throat> I started skipping down the road. Then I wove all the branches together to create a nice little archway and wove some battery-powered lights through them. But just an arbor wasn't enough. I wanted to make a couple signs. All right, well, I just got done setting up the arbor, and now I'm going to make a sign. I was thinking it would be really cool when I ask her out if there's a couple signs nearby, one with our initials J and R on it. Uh, but when I found this piece of wood, uh, I was asking whose it was, and my grandpa actually cut this tree down over 40 years ago, and he uh, cut this slab off thinking he was going to use it for something special someday. And so I asked him if I could use it, and he said he thought it would be the perfect idea to use it. So I'm going to sand this down, and then I'm going to uh, stain our initials in it. After I finished sanding down the signs, I wanted to experiment with the cool idea that I saw online. The process was to cut out stencils of the words you wanted, then tack it to the boards. Then I took this clear paint and sprayed the boards. After removing the paper, I was now left with the letters I wanted. Then I took some acid and painted it on. Next, you take a heat gun and apply the heat to the sign. Wherever the acid was applied is where the wood burns first. So if you do it right, you get a nice sign. Now it didn't turn out as well as I was expecting, but I was running out of time and I knew she would still love it. So the setup was all ready. I had bought the ring earlier that week and the plan was ready to go. Only problem was the weather was really warm and the temperatures caused the snow to melt and then freeze to the road. So we were having some really icy conditions and no snow. That's when my aunt told me my horse won't be able to walk on the ice to pull the sleigh. So we're gonna just have to hope and wait for snow. So I postponed the date one week hoping and praying for snow. Meanwhile, that gave me time to pull the sleigh out from my aunt's shed, dust it off, vacuum out the cobwebs, and shine it up a little. And then one night, midway through the week, it started to snow. And it snowed through the night, and over the course of those next three days, it snowed eight inches of fresh, beautiful white snow. The plan was back on. So February 2nd, I woke up from my bed, unable to sleep. I was tossing and turning, thinking and planning ahead of the big day to come. I got all my camera gear ready, the signs ready, the arbor ready, and I hit the road to go set up the spot. I ran into the woods and found this beautiful opening where I could set up the arbor, hang the signs from the trees, and then I sprinkled a bunch of rose petals all over the ground. And that's where my friend Aaron comes into the story. Well, actually it was at Aaron's house where we met for the first time at the Halloween party, but he comes back into the story. Well, I just got the arbor all set up, the signs, lights, they're good to go. I'm racing over to my friend Aaron's house to uh, give him my big camera, and that way he is gonna be hiding in the trees with it uh, when I walk Ryan up to the arbor and ask her. So I've got a couple GoPros set up to capture her reaction and also have Aaron as a cameraman to get all the angles. So Aaron's all ready. He's headed to the location to set up the cameras. Meanwhile, I was racing back to Kenai to meet up with Ryan. We're going to have a little coffee date, and that's when my aunt is going to call us on our coffee date. So I'm hanging out with Ryan as if nothing's about to happen. We're just finishing up our time at the coffee shop, and we head out the door into the truck, and that's when my aunt Angela calls us out of the blue, and she says, Hey, Josiah, I was just wondering if you or any of the cousins would like to come on over and go for a sleigh ride. I got um, Doug all hooked up this afternoon. What do you think? Want to go on a sleigh ride? Sure. Okay, let's do it.
tell you so much. Three months ago, I met this amazing woman. Three months. I love that you have a heart for God and a smile always on your face. You're always so happy and laughy. I love that about you. Together, I think we're going to make a difference in this world. That is if. <laughs> Ryan, will you marry me? <laughs> yes. Yes, of course I will. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, it's so beautiful. Babe. Well guys, it was so rewarding to go through all these steps to make a good surprise. And Ryan, man, she is totally worth it. I'm so thrilled that I get to encourage her and support her with her life and all of her goals and that she's willing to encourage me to be the best man that I can be with all of my endeavors. Our goal is that our love for each other will show other people just a small glimpse of the love that God has for each of us. Because after all, it's not about us. So Ryan, were you surprised? Well, I was thinking that a sleigh ride was like an obvious giveaway. Uh, but then when Ange called, she was very convincing and seemed way too nonchalant about the whole thing. So I was like, maybe this isn't part of the plan. Um, and then when we got there and saw the whole setup, I was blown away. It was beautiful and Definitely, definitely won't forget it. <laughs>